Hi guys! In today's video we're going to have a look at the new chapter uh, which is about growth and evolution. First we need to describe or define some definitions. So what are scale of operations? Scale of operations, you can think about it uh, as the maximum output that can be achieved using the available inputs uh, or the available resources. So if we're looking at these two factories, the smaller factory has a scale of operations of 5,000 cars because this is the maximum output that it can achieve using the resources that it has available, using the land, the capital, you know, the factory, the, the resources, the labor that it is using. And the bigger factory has a larger maximum output, 10,000 cars, so it has a larger scale of operations. What we need to ask ourselves is whether the scale of operations can be increased in the long term. Well, obviously, yes. In the long term, we can increase from the small factory size to bigger one. For example, by purchasing a new factory, by purchasing another one, so having two factories. And so in the long term, long run, we can employ more of all inputs. In the short run, however, uh, we cannot. And so as we increase the scale of operations, we need to ask ourselves, what happens to input? As we increase the scale of operations, input increases, right? And also, what happens to output? In absolute terms, it also increases. Uh, so the idea is here, as we increase the scale of operations, we use more of all resources to produce more, out, more products. So why are we even talking about this? How does that, you know, how is that related to um, economies of scale and the topic we're here to discuss and growth? Imagine this scenario. What if you increase the scale of operation? Uh, the question is, aren't you going to get any savings along the way? Aren't you going to become more efficient, more productive? Uh, is there perhaps any input that you might need less of? And this is the idea, uh, what, what we're going to discuss. Because we're probably going to see that something is happening to our unit costs as we increase our skill of operations. We're probably going to need less of a certain input and our unit costs are going to decrease. So the term economies of scale, if I'm going to break it down, um, what do economies mean? These are probably some savings coming from, you know, becoming a larger company from increasing our scale. And I was mentioning unit costs on the previous slide. So what are unit costs? Uh, unit costs can be calculated as the total costs divided by the number of units produced. And unit costs are the best and most effective way to calculate efficiency or productivity because how would we compare two different companies and its efficiency in, different, in a different way other than unit costs? So money is universal and it is the best way to compare how much is a particular company saving on by becoming a larger company. And the idea is if unit costs are falling, if they're decreasing, this means that we get an increase in productivity. We need less of our inputs to produce the same amount of outputs, the same amount of products. Again, we need less of certain resources in order to produce our products. Why does that happen or how, how is this possible? Um, if we look at the definition, economies of scale, it's reductions in a firm's unit costs of production that result from an increase in the scale of operations. So again, this is why we came, uh, why I explained the two definitions. I explained what unit costs are and I explained what it means what does it mean, the scale of operations? And so when we have economies of scale, 
We are decreasing the unit costs as we are increasing the size um, of our factory, for example. The idea here is that as we increase all inputs, the scale of operation is also increasing. However, the average costs per unit decrease. And so if we put this on a graph, and at the bottom we have scale of operation, as we are increasing the scale of operation, the average production costs decrease. And the optimal level of output is going to be where our average costs per unit are at its lowest point. This would be our optimal level of output. So economies of scale, you can think of those as cost benefits, or as I said before, reductions or savings. And obviously in some industries, these savings will be so important, so substantial, that small firms will be unlikely to survive without them. So if you think about oil refining or even soft drink production, you probably won't see many businesses that operate in those industries on a small level, probably even none. Because the economies of scale are so important here, then we need to be doing these particular industries on a large level. We need to have a large scale of operation. And so when we're talking about economies of scale, these occur when larger firms are able to lower their unit costs. And the reason why this ha will happen uh, is actually, there are multiple reasons why this will happen. An example, a large firm may be able to buy in bulk, it may be able to organize production more efficiently, or perhaps even might raise capital cheaper and more efficiently. And in general, we're going to distinguish between internal economies of scale. So these arise from the increased output of the business itself. So these will be caused by the business itself and external economies of scale, which will occur within an industry. So for external economies of scale, all competitors will benefit. Now we're going to have a look at different types of these either internal economies or external economies. And so that it's not so obvious, try to have a look at the different types and uh, try to assign what, what could be, they be called? So try to match the names to the different definitions. Okay, if you're not finished, then pause the video. I'm going to show the answer. So uh, the first definition is businesses grow, you need to order larger quantities of production inputs. Those would be bulk buying economies. Yeah, this basically means that we are asking our suppliers to decrease um, the prices so that we are getting better prices and we're cutting our costs. We're probably going to be able to do that with our suppliers if we have more bargaining power and we'll have more bargaining power if we buy more from them. We're going to become a more important customer for them. Okay, the second definition, businesses with large-scale production can use more advanced machinery or they can use mass production techniques and so on. So these would be technical economies. The evidence of technical economies would be also in, in being able to invest into research and development. So this would be also one characteristic of businesses uh, with large-scale production that benefit from technical economies. Now, the larger firms find it easier to find potential lenders. This one should be easy. These are financial economies of scale. Many marketing costs are fixed costs. And so as a business gets larger, it is able to spread the cost of marketing over a wider range of products and sales. These are marketing economies. If you are a business, which is a bigger business, you can afford to buy, for example, one billboard. But it doesn't matter if I'm, if I'm using that billboard to uh, advertise five branches or if I'm using the billboard to advertise 10 branches. If I'm using it to advertise 10 branches, then I'm achieving marketing economies of scale. Okay, and the last one are managerial economies. And that basically means that as the business grows, 
and we have more people working in the business, we probably won't need like exponentially more managers. Also, it means that people can specialize. So we might have departments for different areas. So this is where you can link this topic to business functions. In a small firm, on the other hand, many roles will be performed by the same person. But in the, in the bigger companies, first of all, you can specialize, you can become an expert and efficient in a certain area. And at the same time, when you have managers uh, or managerial positions, then you might just have one manager per department. And it doesn't matter if the department is made out of um, eight people or if it is made out of two people, you'll still probably need a manager. So a bigger business is going to save money by just having that one manager. And this means that it's uh, using managerial economies of scale. Now, when it comes to external, again, I have a matching activity. So you try to match the names to the actual definitions. Okay, so you're probably not done. So if not, please pause the video, try to finish it yourself. Um, otherwise, I'm going to give the answer. So technological progress. This happens when productivity is increased within the whole industry. For example, uh, the internet has been a huge source of cost savings. Uh, today, we can see that, for example, in the use of AI. When it comes to skilled labor, if you have skilled labor in a particular area, so for example, you might have different clusters. Very famous cluster is the Silicon Valley. This means that in that particular area, you'll have skilled labor specialized in your industry. And it will be very easy for businesses to find skilled employees. And this will cut recruitment costs and will not at the same time compromise any productivity levels. And this will benefit all the industry, so even your competitors, and therefore it's external. Another reason or factor is improved transportation network. So as we have a certain area or certain industry uh, evolving and growing, you know, the government might, might support that by improving their transportation network, by building roads, by building railways. And basically this is going to increase or speed up deliveries and increase customer satisfaction and convenience. And last but not least, regional specialization. This will happen when a particular location will acquire a reputation for producing certain goods or services. So as I said, Silicon Valley will have the reputation of being an IT hub. And basically this will create access to specialist labor, uh, subcontractors and suppliers working in that particular industry and it will help reduce the average cost of production for the industry. Now, the question that I'm going to ask you is whether a company can become too big. And this idea of becoming too big is now related to the next term that we're going to define, which is the diseconomies of scale. So diseconomies of scale is actually the opposite of economies of scale and that the factors that cause average co uh, costs of production to rise, to increase, when the scale of operation is increased. And the idea is that the factors that will cause these average costs to increase will be probably different to the factors that cause it to decrease. But at this, from a certain level, these factors that cause average costs to increase will sort of have a higher impact on the business than the factors that cause average costs to decrease. So it's kind of like the diseconomies of scale will win over economies of scale. And diseconomies of scale means that as we increase all inputs, and therefore the scale of operation increases, our average costs also start to increase. Now, when does that happen? If we look at the, at the graph, as the scale of operation is increasing, our average costs from a certain point start to increase. So from the optimal level to the right, we have diseconomies of scale. So what would be some internal reasons for diseconomies of scale? 
When a business grows very large, the cost per unit can increase mainly due to poor communication. As we're going to see in our later chapter, the importance of effective or efficient communication has big impact on businesses. And if we're not able to communicate efficiently, we might have costs increasing. You might have the poor communication between different departments or even along the chain of command, along the, in the same department, for example, from the top managers to the workers at the very bottom. Another reason for cost increase is lack of motivation. So as we have more workers working for a business, the business is becoming too large. The workers kind of feel the anonymity of, of working in the business. They will feel less motivated and motivation very often drives productivity. So if you do not have motivation, then this will also have a negative result. Uh, and a large business might also lose direction and coordination, right? So it might be very difficult, first of all, because of poor communication, but also because just every department will have its own agenda, then it might be very difficult to coordinate and give this big organization a sense of direction. Uh, another reason will be raw materials. So if, if materials in general are overused, they will go up in price. Okay? We will have increase in the prices of those raw materials. Another reason might be shortage of workers. If workers leave an area, there might be a recession or some danger. And the businesses without workers, then these businesses are going to fight for those workers. They're going to increase salaries just to motivate workers to come work for them. And basically, as we increase salaries, as we're kind of fighting for this resource, which are those workers, the costs of those workers are also going to increase. And last but not least, the suppliers. So as suppliers are going to experience their own internal diseconomies of scale, they can raise prices and pass on the, the effect of their diseconomies of scale on their customers. Now, some external uh, reasons for diseconomies of scale is these will happen as we increase the average of cost of production uh, for the whole industry, and these will be happening for factors which are beyond our, our business's control. So what could those be? Uh, this could be traffic jams and perhaps delays in business districts. This could be high rent because of high demand in business districts and high cost of labor in urban areas. These factors are going to affect the whole of the industry, not just a particular business. And therefore, these would be external so you might ask yourself, what is an appropriate scale of operation? How are we going to know when to stop growing? Hmm. Well, we need to consider what are the owner's needs. When you're going to get a case study, you might have the needs of the owner mentioned. Does the owner want to be in control? What were the original aims of the owner? What were the original goals or motivations? Why the owner created the business he or she created? Then we might consider our capital available. How much do we have? Are we going to need more? Can we manage to fulfill our goals using the capital that we already have available? Or are we going to need to grow in order to benefit from financial economies of scale? Then we're also going to look at the size of the market the firm operates in. So if the, whether the market is big, whether the market is small. If the market is small, then we do not need to have a large business, probably. And also, what is the number of competitors? Are we competing with a lot of other businesses? Or are we perhaps operating in a niche market where not many competitors are entering, where the market is small? Maybe we, don't, we ourselves do not need to grow. And also, what is the scope for economies of scale? What are the opportunities for us to actually benefit from economies of scale? So here is an exam tip. If an examination question asks you to consider the most appropriate skill of production in a given situation, you'll probably need to assess these five factors and talk about these five factors. But also if you can think of other factors to talk about, then you're free to do that.